Hello and welcome to a video all about this rather snazzy Sony VAIO PC that I recently got off Facebook Marketplace. I have had one of these before and I did a video a while back about this machine here. So the two slightly different models, but essentially they're very similar. The model number of the old one is PCV2236 and it's a 2.66 gig Pentium 4 with a Radeon 9200. And the model number of this new one is PCV2211 and it's a Pentium 4 2.66, but it's supposed to have a GeForce 4 Ti 4200 and that's missing from this machine so we're going to do something about that in this video. So the label on the front implies it's very much a multimedia photo editing type machine and yeah we can see the 2.66 gig Pentium 4 and the missing GeForce 4 Ti 4200 64 megabytes so we'll see what we can find for that. And there's the missing flap careful not to break it like the other one so yeah we've got stuff in there we've got the i think that's a sony memory stick socket and a couple of usbs so cool nice to have it complete and well i think i'm going to do in this video is compare the performance of the two so processor wise they're very very much the same so we'll see what the graphics card difference was i'm not going to do a strip down or anything on this machine it's really clean actually it doesn't really need anything doing to it so I can't see any reason to take it apart. We'll have a quick go over what we can see from the outside. So the motherboard's proprietary Sony thingamajig, Sony Vio Kirin P motherboard. Couldn't find much information about that one. So yeah, it's got a 1.5 volt AGP slot, three PCIs and one of those little CNR communication network riser things at the end there. And apart from that, it's all pretty straightforward. As far as I can tell, this motherboard is just a Sony rebadged version of the Asus P4 SD VX that was in the other machine. Looks identical, except it's got different names on the silk screen. So yeah, that's the Intel 865G chipset, front side buses 400, 533 and 800. And yeah, I think they... They must have had some kind of deal with Asus because I seem to remember that the other machine had everything made by Asus in it. And there is a single stick of one gig of RAM. I'll just leave that for now. I can always upgrade it later. It's easy enough to do. I got this off Facebook Marketplace for £10 because the guy who sold it said it wasn't working. But I gave everything a jiggle and it worked. It didn't have the hard drive so I put the hard drive from the other machine in because it has a fairly clean install of the original OEM XP installed from Sony and we'll just have to try and find a graphics card to fill that empty AGP slot and this is what we're going to fill it with so 4200s aren't really that cheap anymore but this one was pretty cheap it's a Medion branded one so it's from the Aldi PCs that used to sell uh, I think it's slightly lower clocked than the normal ones but it should do the job so these cards are slightly different to the normal ones you would get from other manufacturers, despite the fact that it was made by MSI. The clocks are all slightly slower. It's DDR memory and it's 128 megabytes, so more than the 64 that would have been in this machine. It's clocked at 225 for the core and it would have been 250 on anybody else's card. And it's clocked at 223 for the memory and that would have also been 250 if you bought it from any other manufacturer. So there's one thing I want to do to this card before we put it in the machine and that is the last time I ordered some stickers from Mr. Geekenspiel. He sent me some freebies and they're NVIDIA fan stickers. So what, what a perfect opportunity to put one of those into action. Actually I spoke too soon because we're not going to put this in the machine now, we're going to put this in the machine. So this is the Radeon 9200 from the other Sony VAIO and just out of curiosity I thought I'd put this in and bench them both, just a quick bench and get a feel for what the difference is because this is kind of a generation later really. So the cards look pretty well matched in a lot of ways it'd be quite an interesting match i think this i my gut told me the 9200 would be slower but i'm wondering now so the 9200 came out a year and a half later than the ti 4200 clockwise they're very similar so it's 250 for the 9200 on the core versus 225 on the ti and it's 200 on the memory versus 223 on the ti so fairly similarly matched for clocks 
the difference in AGP port might feature here. So it's 4x for the TI versus 8x for the 9200. The Radeon also has the same vertex shaders and pixel shader versions as the TI. So it's 1.1 for vertex shaders and actually it's slightly different. It's 1.3 for pixel shaders on the TI and version 1.4 for pixel shaders on the Radeon. So that might also make a little bit of a difference. Uh, apart from that, it's both 128 meg cards with 128 bit buses for the memory. And it might be quite an interesting little shootout. So interesting to see what happens. So in she goes and let's get some drivers on there as well. And then we'll be good to go and do some benchmarks. So for testing, we're going to run a few quick tests. We're not going to do any graphs or anything like that. So to start with, we're going to do Dungeon Siege just because it's a period correct DirectX 8 game and it seems like a good choice. Then we're going to use 3D Mark 2001. And apart from looking at the score, really concentrating on what the game demos are all about in both of the versions of 3D Mark I'm going to use. So there's four games in 3D Mark 2001. The first one is Car Chase, and Car Chase is all about multi layered texturing, use of vertex shaders. It's not got a terribly high polygon count, but it's got some sort of decent sort of density of textures and things like that. So that's going to be the first test. Then there's the Dragothic game, which is kind of the same thing again there's a bit more fancy lighting going on in this one and morphing which exercises the vertex shader quite heavily it uses a lot of shadows it's got multi-layered textures it's got a more dense polygon count than the car chase one and it's also got some fairly dense texturing going on then there's the lobby game which is kind of looks like the matrix and got people floating through the air and stuff like that shooting guns so this is a much more dense polygon count and less dense in terms of texture and it's supposed to represent a sort of average period correct game the last game is Nature. I remember looking at this one when I tested my GeForce 3 because I think that's pretty much what it was designed for. It's all about pushing pixel shaders and vertex shaders and the terrain is mapped per pixel and it uses things like cube maps. It's got more multi-layered texturing, it's got denser textures and it will only work with cards that fully implement DirectX 32 support. So we'll have to see what these do with that. I imagine the GeForce 4 works since GeForce 3 did, but I don't know about the Radeon. The 3D Mark 2003 is a really interesting benchmark because it splits the games up and it independently supports everything from DirectX 7 up to DirectX 9. So if you're running Wings of Fury, which is the first game that's purely aimed at DirectX 7, I think um, whoever it was, Mad Onion, or whoever it was who was making 3D Mark at the time, had suddenly realized that a lot of people just couldn't afford to be staying on the cutting edge so a lot of their market was with older graphics cards so people needed to know can their their old mx 400 still run anything that's coming out today kind of thing so wings of fury only runs on directx 7 and it doesn't really use a lot of anything so both of these cards chomp through that so the second game is the battle of proxycom and this one moves on to DirectX 8, so it only exercises DirectX 8 functionality and it needs at least 128 megs of RAM. So this is probably where these cards might be a little bit old for this benchmark and it uses a lot in, the, in, the, in terms of pixel shaders and the vertex shaders. It wants pixel shader 1.4, pixel shader version 1.4 apparently massively reduces the, the number of rendering passes that it needs to be made so i don't know whether there's a big jump from 1.3 to 1.4 or not we'll find out but yeah this is going to push these cards pretty hard so the next game trolls layer again it's doing similar kind of stuff it's using a lot of um shadows it's got a lot of real-time physics going on um, again it's pushing the pixel shaders and it says again that version 1.4 is going to 
pretty significantly reduce the number of rendering passes that you need. Uh, it's using 64 megs, half the RAM for storing textures and a lot more as well for the vertex buffers. So yeah, that, both of those games are really going to push, even though the DirectX 8, they're really going to push these cards. The final game here is a version of Nature again called Mother Nature, and this one's DirectX 9, so neither of these cards have got DirectX 9 support. It also needs two pixel shaders and two vertex shaders. So that's something I didn't mention before. The 9200 only has one vertex shader and only has one pixel shader. The TI 4200 is a little bit better off. It has two vertex shaders and one pixel shader. So I think they'll struggle with 2003, but it will probably really reveal which of these cards has the most power, even if they both have no frame counts. The one that has the most frame counts is probably really the one that's got the most sort of warmth. And then to finish off, we'll go around the original game, return to Castle in a whole bunch of resolutions and see how they go with that. So, once we've gone through all of that with the Radeon, it was time to take it out. <laughs> Replace it with the TI 4200. Done all the benchmarking on this and been through all of that, but I'll save the excitement till the end and I'll just have a quick go over of the results. In goes the TI 4200 and let's see how this one performs. Okay, so the first benchmark was Dungeon Siege. Dungeon Siege is a bit of a weird one because it does all sorts of weird AI things and, and scaling and while it says it has settings that you can set as flags in the path that you run for the for the resolution and things like that it seems to ignore every setting you you make so i always just run it once it always gives us the same results but in this case it really did give the same results it gave a frame rate for the 4200 as 78.33 frames a second and for the 9200 it's 78.26 so my first initial instinct was that was hitting some kind of ceiling though v-sync has definitely turned off at this point for both cards so yeah i don't really know what's going on there but the score is almost identical so just taking a look at the results of 3 d 2001 at the different resolutions i did say that we went up to 2084 by 1536 but the ti 4200 just wouldn't do it i was just getting out of range on my i don't know whether it's the card limitation or the driver limitation or whatever so I just dropped that from the the little bit of text here. But yeah, we can see that there's a fairly obvious pattern and that they start off pretty close at low resolutions, but the TI-4200 pulls ahead as we get into the higher resolutions. This is just for the 3D mock. So as we get into the games, it gives a slightly different picture, probably a bit more detailed picture. So down the left, we've got labels for the different games, card, gothic, lobby, and nature. Nature wouldn't run at all on the 9200, so I assume that is because the 9200 doesn't fully support the DirectX 32 that was a prerequisite for that. But apart from that, if you look at the car game, going across all the resolutions for both the cards, they're pretty similar. The The... 9200 maybe falls away a little bit more towards the higher resolution end of things, but apart from that, they're fairly similar in the same kind of ballpark. At Dragothic, if you go across, the figures are generally higher on the TI, and I think that's because it uses a lot of morphing and it uses a lot of, it puts heavy use on the vertex shaders, and of course, there's an extra vertex shader on the TI. The 9200's only got one, TI's got two, so that probably explains that, but both of them are not that far apart, apart from when you get into higher resolutions, the gap drifts again to be slightly larger. And then if you look at the lobby game, they're both in the ballpark again, so it falls away again at higher resolutions on the 9200, but they're still not too far apart, so you get a maximum of a kind of 10 frame a second gap as you get to higher res resolutions, but apart from that, they tend to be in the same ballpark three or four points apart so yeah maybe the 9200 isn't such a bad performer after all and as we look at 3d mark 2003 the story is kind of similar except bizarrely the gap closes as we get up to the higher resolutions we skipped 1280 by 1024 in this test 
just because I wasn't paying attention in one of the tests. But yeah, they're fairly consistent. The 2900s behind the TI for mostly by about the same margin, but then closes a little bit towards the end at 1600 by 1200. So it's a bit strange. It'd be interesting to see what it looks like in the games. Same thing for 3D Mark 2003. Down the left, we've got the names of the games Wings of Fury for Battle of Proxicon, L for Lobby and N for Nature. Okay, looking at the games, the labels are as before, so Wings of Fury, W, B for Battle of Proxicon, L for Lobby and N for the Nature game. And yeah, if we look at, first of all, the Wings of Fury game, the cards both scored pretty well in that as expected because that's a DirectX 7 game if you remember and this card should easily, well, both cards should easily deal with that game and indeed it doesn't drop below 30 frames a second and 40 is the minimum on the 9200 9200 just a little bit slower than the ti when it comes to the other games battle of proxycon and the lobby game you can see both cards struggle this is probably beyond them it's probably taxing the vertex shaders and the pixel shaders and the fill rates and the layered textures are probably a bit too much for these cards to handle but it gives you an idea of their relative performance and again they're pretty similar at low resolutions and the gap widens a little bit when you get up to 1600 by 1200. The nature game in this if you remember is DirectX 9 and neither one of these cards wanted anything to do with it so no scores for that. So you know I was expecting the TI to be considerably faster than the 9200 but it doesn't seem to be the case it seems to be fairly close. And then we come to return to Castle Wolfenstein. So at those resolutions, you can see the cards are pretty much neck and neck and they both perform pretty well. The 9200 drops away a little bit towards the end, but they're getting pretty high frame weights all the way through at all resolutions here. So still above 60 for the 2900, they were closer to 100 at 1600 by 1200. But yeah, basically these cards aren't too far apart. The TIs are a little bit faster generally and i was expecting it to be a lot faster but yeah they're both comparable cards which means these sony's well they've both made reasonable gaming machines i guess so i guess with the ti being earlier it was a better performer for DirectX 8.1 but by the time the 9200 came out DirectX 9 was on the horizon and i think it was from the 9600 onwards that series was all DirectX 9 compatible so this was already aiming at the sort of office pc with that in mind but yeah but if you think about sort of 2000 2001 2002 gaming i think both cards are reasonably capable so cool so that pretty much wraps it up i was expecting a bigger gap thinking that that other machine was maybe a, a lesser model designed more for office work but they're not that far apart from that brief test obviously i think in practice maybe the ti will be better i don't know but I'm pleased to have this machine complete with this little flap at the bottom. It's now got its TI-4200 in it, albeit a slightly different spec one. And the other machine, I think, which is pretty tatty, will just become a spares donor for this, should I need any bits from it. And I'm pleased to have this in my collection. It's a smart little PC, not the most desirable thing in the world, but yeah, nice to have. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I'm glad to have this computer. I hope you enjoyed this journey exploring the differences between the two and i hope to see you next time thanks for watching bye